Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, I'm so grateful for this I give you praise. I remember like singing like that was another thing that I would do I would sing I would go like get in the back of the closet and lay and stretch out and sing under the clothes you know the clothes would be hanging down over my face and I'd be singing my mother if she didn't feel like hearing it it was I was just hollering shut up all that hollering stop making all that noise all of the abuse that happened to me came from family members. I'm in the back seat and I'm four years old and I'm really crying and my brand new mother turns around in the fr from the front seat, yells at me, you shut up all that noise. So this is the beginning of my new life with my new mom and dad. This new family starts introducing me to a lot of sexual information. When I'm four, there's teenage boys in the house. I start learning how to do hand jobs and blow jobs and people touching me and, and dry humping me and you know, all of this weird stuff that I don't understand. So I'm trying to figure out how to navigate all of this. I understand that when I do things that make them feel good, I'm a pretty little girl. But it's there, it's a secret that I'm not supposed to talk about when nobody else is around. And I feel better when I'm a pretty little girl and I feel horrible when I'm this ugly, stupid child. I was eight years old the first time I ever got penetrated. Now, I was being abused long before that, but I was eight when I got raped by one of my cousins. And my, my dad was just another one of these miserable people who had to find a reason to be miserable and try to make you miserable. When I was 12 is when he came into my room. The thing that woke me up was him trying to get in the bed with me. I like to tuck my covers in real tight. And so he was moving the mattress, trying to get the blankets out from underneath the mattress so he could get in the bed with me. And I go, what are you doing in here? I go, are you drunk? He goes, no, I'm not drunk. I said, you must be drunk. And he wasn't. And my mother heard him, but she never said anything to me. Nobody reported him because I've been abused for so long. I still want to be in my house um, with my dad, um, who is abusive. East Palo Alto is all gentrified now, but there's this one when I was living there all of the like drug dealers and pimps and hookers like would hang out and so he drove me to that spot and showed me all these people and said that's your life you'll never amount to anything this is what you're gonna end up as and i felt like he was right i went home and uh, tried to commit suicide by spraying raid and i i sprayed it in a in a glass full of um cherry seven up and I drank that I said it doesn't matter he goes what you mean it doesn't matter I said I'm gonna die now so none of this matters I went through my little 72 hour hold I never told them what was really going on 
I just chalked it up to me and my dad don't get along. <sighs> Another situation where I couldn't, I couldn't um, speak up. And so I ended up in the same place, back in the abusive home. And because I was too afraid to speak up. As much as I have healed from my own pain, it, it just feels huge right now to do something to make sure that little girls don't have to go through that. It feels like I need an army of people to help so that no other little girls have to go through that. And when I think of how many people saw me suffering and how many people knew that I was being abused and they didn't step up, it bothers me. And I just, I'm like, I don't want that for anybody else. I just think that family is what you decide it is or what I decided it was, and, and I have that. There are probably things that show up in my life the way I handle, like, my grandchildren. Like, they don't call me grandma. They call me Carrie. They light up my whole life, but they also keep me so committed to making sure that people can heal from being abused. And while I won't ever know the impact that sharing my story will have, I will be grateful for each and every child that is safe because somebody heard what I said. And when these kids go out into the world and encounter somebody who is hurting because they have undealt with wounds, I feel like if I can help those people heal before my granddaughters encounter them, then I'm doing what I can do to make the world a better place.